knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow. The hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Friends, there has been no interruption in the mining of blue coal. Every working day, the blue coal mines are producing at full capacity. Yes, householders can fill their bins with blue coal this spring and be sure of the same steady, healthful warmth next winter they have enjoyed this year. Because of the shortage of other fuels, the demand for hard coal has greatly increased. And for your safety and comfort next winter, we want to make this suggestion. Place your order this spring, the sooner the better, for the coal you will need next winter. Don't take a chance. Call the nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow and ask him to schedule your spring delivery of blue coal. America's finest hard coal. The Shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Ghost That Gleams. A low, rambling cottage is situated along a lonely strip of sandy beach. Even inside the cottage, you can hear the distant boom of the waves and the low moan of the wind along the dunes. Max, shut the door. Huh? Shut the door. It's cold in the house. All right. It's dark from the dunes and on the ocean. How are you standing at the door? Staring. To find out. To find out what? If he comes by land or by sea. Stop it. <laughs> Max, stop it. Sorry. I'm not being very considerate, I know. Don't, don't. But it's become a little wearing my own particular private ghost. Just your nerves. Oh, no, my dear, not my nerves. A tall ghost who stoops a little. A ghost in shapeless, colorless clothes. A ghost whose face gleams. Max, darling. I don't think I can stand it much longer. The limits. You have to sleep sometimes, and I don't dare sleep. Your imagination. There are no such things as ghosts. This, my love, is my ghost. It's a very special thing between us. We don't care to let others in on our little friendship. Oh, I don't like to hear you talk like that. I don't like to hear myself. Maybe. Maybe it's just because I'm tired. Maybe it's really not me. I am tired. Let's go to sleep, Max. All right. You'll go to sleep. I'll get things ready. Max, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't. Lucy. Lucy. What is it, dear? Uh, nothing. Nothing. <gasps> Lucy. Lucy, come here, quick. Come Max, what? Quick, the window. I'm looking at the window. You see what I see. Max, there's nothing at the window. But he's there. He's his dead face gleaming. His dead face. There's nothing. Nobody at the window. There's nobody at the window, darling. Nobody at all. It's been going on now for weeks, Mr. Cranston. I can't take it anymore. Must be a disturbing experience, Mr. Hill. I've been to the police. They were polite, but I got nothing out of them. I wonder if... If I've been to a doctor, psychiatrist... Yes, Miss Lane, they find nothing wrong. I'm not insane. I wish I could help you. You've got to help me. Look, I've heard about you many times. That's why I came here. I need help, and I know of no one to whom I can turn. What is our schedule like, Margaret? We were twins. We couldn't take care of more than half of them. I know how busy you must be, Mr. Cranston. Can you realize how desperate I am? Margaret. Yes? 
To get some things together, we're going down to Oceanside tonight. Oceanside? Yeah, Mr. Hale has a cottage there with his wife. He can put us up for a while. All right. Anything special I should take with me? I mean... Yes, Miss Lane. Something special. I can trap a goat. We don't have much farther to go. Well, I can see your place now. It's isolated, isn't it? I've always preferred to be alone with Lucia, of course. Now, I don't know. Cottage is right near the water's edge. Nothing here but miles of sand dunes. It must be lonely. It is sometimes, Mr. Uh, the cottage. Is that your wife playing? Yes. Lucia! Lucia! Darling. Oh, company. Uh, Lamont Cranston, Margot Lane, my wife. How do you do? How do you do? Today? I'm so glad you came. I, I love the sea, but it gets a bit lonely. Max never spoke of you. Uh, they're, they're very old friends, Lucia. And they were kind enough to come along with me, I I ran into the city. Oh, you should go to the city more often. Max, look after Mr. Cranston. Margot, may I show you your room? Thank you. Your wife's very charming. She's stuck to me faithfully through all this, but... But she's never seen him. Ghost? She's never seen him, and yet he gleams like a beacon of a dam. Easy now. We'll try to make sense out of the thing, whatever it is. But suppose it doesn't make sense. Suppose I'm supposing. You've managed to pull yourself together a bit on the train. But I'm back or he comes for me. Where? What was... The woman screaming back of the house. Come along. Turn down the hall. Margo! Tell him, Margo! <laughs> what happened, <laughs> Lucia? I, I'm sorry, but maybe my nerves aren't as strong as I thought. You better I... not talk to you. <laughs> Come on, come here. The closet. All right, what is it? Mrs. Hill was showing me the room. She opened the closet and... That across her face. A uh, clump of seaweed. It's wet. Must have been a horrible feeling, Mama. That wet, clammy stuff across her face. I don't blame her for screaming. No, but it doesn't make a good beginning for debunking a ghost. Because, because what, Lamont? Because a clump of wet seaweed is one of the oldest marks. Things that walk on me. <laughs> Every time before it, he appears, sand rattles against the window. Little squirts of sand as though ghostly hands were throwing it. Might be the wind. Yes, it might, except that it's happened on still nights. Nights when there was no wind. Where did you live before you came here? In many places, for a little while. Then we'd move on. See. Was there ever anything in your life connected with the sea? For the sea? No, never. Well, nothing's happening tonight. No. It's, um, it's quite late. Margot must be tired and your wife. All right, we'll go to bed. Perhaps tonight I'll be able to sleep. Lucia? Yes, darling? Our guests are tired. Oh, of course. Time for bed. Weather's blowing up a bit. Often does at this hour. Something to do with tides or... It'll make me all the happier for being indoors. Well, shall we? I'll take it to your room, Margot. Thank you, sir. Good night, Mrs. Hale. Mr. Hale. Good night. Good night. Good night. Monty's terrified. Yes, I know. There's your room, madame. Wind's bad tonight. And the waves like distant cannon fire. Listen. They sound like waves to me. Good night, darling. Good night, Lamont. Lamont! Yes, Margaret? If there were ghosts, this would be such a good place for them to walk, wouldn't it? staring out over the ocean for such a long time. Lucia, how did that seaweed get into the closet? I don't know. 
Somebody must have accidentally... Accidentally? Somebody? Who? Max, there's a very simple explanation. Well, must be. Must be. What's that? Sounds like... Like a bird, maybe. Birds don't whistle like that. I... It's nothing. It... It must be nothing. We both hear it. Someone at the door. Right. Someone's followed enough to knock. I'll see who it is. Shall I? No. I'm not afraid of anything that can knock on a door. We should go to sleep. Oh. That whistle. It reminds me of something. Something. Oh. Hello, Nick. Hello. Who are you? Swift and wild outside. Would be a warmer inside, me. Sorry. Come in. Thank you. You know me. Look but again, Max. So many years. The man doesn't grow younger, he grows older. And I've grown older. Oh, that's right, Nick. What do you want, Paula? You've done well, Nick, in all the years, too. Very well. I inquired before I sought you out here. What if I have? Don't misunderstand me, Nick. I'm delighted. Terribly delighted, Nick. Thank you. Because if you hadn't done so well, Nick, you wouldn't have such a nice fire. So charming and welcome to home. If you hadn't done so well, Nick. You wouldn't be able to take care of old Paulie. Take care of him? That's right, Max. I need taking care of him. I'm old. I need money. Paulie, if you think I'm I going... know you're going to, Max. For old time's sake. You're calling yourself Hale now, aren't you? That's right. Instead of... Shut up! Mustn't mention it. Hmm? Paulie, listen... Oh, I'll look at you. I knew you would, Max. I can't very well do anything tonight, though. I have a room in town. Good. I'll see you there in the morning. Not too early, Max. Hmm? Because you'll have to stop off at your bank first, won't you? Yes, I will. 49 Beach Road, Max. Don't forget. I won't. 49 Beach Road. Good night. Good night. And happy dreams. <laughs> Turn to the shadow in just a minute. Friends, right now is the time to make plans for a warm home next winter. Because of the shortage of other fuels, the demand for hard coal has greatly increased. And that is why it is important now for you to place your order for blue coal. Yes, to be sure of a warm, comfortable home next winter, order your supply of blue coal now and fill your bin to the brim. The fact that you can store coal in large quantities is one of the big advantages over other fuels. When you've got a supply of blue coal in your bin, you've got a real treasure chest in your basement. No matter what happens next winter, you'll be safe and warm and enjoy the steadier, more healthful heat that only blue coal gives. So, don't be one of the shivering thousands next winter. Take advantage of a summer delivery and enjoy guaranteed heat no matter what happens next winter. Get this security now. Phone the nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow... Tell him you want your delivery of blue coal during the summer months. And ask him about easy budget terms. You'll find him listed in the yellow classified section of your telephone directory under the words blue coal. Now, back to the shadow. <laughs> Margot and Lamont are staying at the seaside cottage of Max and Lucia Hale. 
Cranston has consented to investigate a strange apparition, which Hale claims he sees. It's almost midnight, when suddenly there's a scream of pain and terror. <laughs> they rush out into the night across the sand dunes to investigate. The scream came from this direction, I think, Margo. It's so dark. Shifting sands could bury anything or anyone. Not over there. Yes. Looks like... Like an arm sticking out of the sand. I'll see. You better not look, darling. It is an arm. Bobby's underneath the sand. Oh. Yeah. He's a little old man. Yes. His face, it, it's so contorted. There's some papers on him. Lord. His name was Paulie, James Paulie. He's just come to this country. He's been abroad, China and India. Poor devil. Ma, do you think there's any connection between him and Max? I don't know. Max is very reticent about his past. But this man couldn't be the ghost, could he? And it's unlikely. Max described a tall ghost. Margaret, there's something Max hasn't told us. I felt that too, but... We'll have to get Paulie to the police. Then I think Max is going to receive a visit from the shadow. Who? Who is it? Just a moment. Who? There's no one. There is someone. You may shut the door now, Max. Why? I don't... Shut the door. Oh. All right. But this is insane. I'm alone. No, you're not alone. I'm with you, Max. The shadow is at your side. <laughs> shadow? What do you want of me? The truth. Who are you, Max? Max Hale. Hale. Who are you, Max? My, my real name is Carter. Max Carter. Why did you change your name? Because uh, I killed him. Where? Indochina. When? Ten years ago. But it wasn't murder. It was self-defense. I had to kill him or he'd have killed me. What was his name? Stephen Osgood. He wanted Lucia. We quarreled. I shot him point blank. Then? I left the country. I left a fortune behind, but I had to flee. Lucia joined me later here. I changed my name. The ghost which comes to you with a gleaming face is the ghost of this... Stephen Osgood. The man I killed. You've told the truth, Max. Yes, I have. I have. Very well. I shall leave you now. If you've lied in any way, I shall return. I shall exact a just punishment. A just punishment. <laughs> Come on. Hmm? How long have we been waiting out here now? Uh, let's see. Almost an hour. Oh, it's no good. The ghost just isn't going to appear. Uh, perhaps you're right. Let's go in and get some sleep, darling. All right. My eyes are so tired. And I'm cold. Wonder if ghosts get cold. Well, here we are. Lamont? Yes, Margot. Very cold, Margot. Oh, I'll put the heat on. There. It's only a little electric heater, but out here we can't be particular. I like it out here, except for. for... I think we should all go to bed. That's a very good idea. Yes, let's. Wait. That's the sound he always makes before him. Lamont, look. At the window. It's dark, but you can see a face. A gleaming face. Gleaming. Outlines of his shoulders and body. I'm going to... Max, they're done. I'm going to see how much of a ghost he is. I fired at him. I couldn't have missed it, yet he's still there. I hit him. He's gone. Lamont. He ducked into the dunes. The suit would be impossible unless you had a regiment. How can you catch something that laughs at bullets? Mr. Cranston, I'm going out of my mind if this doesn't stop. i got to get away from you here. You can't escape by running, Max. You've got to stay here. And, and what? And confront your ghost. But you'll confront it, Max. You have my word for it. You'll confront your ghost tonight. <laughs> Late, Lamont. Very late. Yes. I 
time to go to work. Max and Lucia are sound asleep. Good. Now then, Margot, it's, uh, it's warm in here. Well? I want you to wait five minutes and then switch that heater off. Well, that isn't hard, but it's no time to explain now. I'm going out on the dunes. This time, Margot, I think I'll trap that ghost. <laughs> late to be up, isn't it? I couldn't sleep. I dressed and... I know. I'm restless, too. I, uh... Where's Mr. Cranston? In his room, I think. He's a very nice man. What... What does he do? What do you mean? I meant... Uh, he was young. I wondered what his occupation was. Oh. He's a criminologist. Oh. Why did you turn the heater off? It's too warm in the room. Yes, it is. I, I think I'll go to bed now. Good night, Margot. Good night, Mrs. Hale. Good night, Mrs. Hale. The very white Mrs. Hale. <laughs> Boy, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What's what? happening? What? Let go of me. Let go. I'll let you go, sir. You'll be quiet now. You knocked him down, a man who... Margot, may I introduce you to a Mr. Osgood? A gentleman who's reportedly dead, but who isn't. A gentleman, furthermore, who has a very odd habit of gleaming at night. <laughs> I don't like sedatives. You need one. A stiff sedative, Max. But I, I told you I don't want one. Max, darling, you're going to take this one. But... So that you'll sleep soundly, very soundly indeed. Lucia, I won't. You will, for my sake, Max. For your sake? Yes, I too want to sleep soundly. How will my taking a sedative help you? I couldn't sleep soundly otherwise. Your friends disturb me. Lamont and Margot, why? Oh, let's say just because they play with heaters. Here it is, darling. Your sedative. Uh, Take it, Max. Take it. Oh, Max. The shadow, Lucia. Max, is there someone in the room or am I going mad? You're not going mad. Max, put that sedative down. Drink it. You've got to. You drink that sedative, you'll die, Max. I don't understand. She's got to poison you to kill you. Because the game's out of her hand. What game? The game of driving you mad so that she and her confederate can take your money. Her confederate? Yes, the same one she had years ago in Indochina. Uh, Mr. Stephen Osgood. But he's dead. No, he's very much alive with his hands tied in the next room. But I killed him. You shot at him, but you didn't kill him. Your gun was loaded with blanks. Right, Mrs. Hale? I... I didn't know anything about it. You I... stayed behind with your husband, fled the Orient, Lucia. You and your friend Osgood took his fortune. Then you rejoined Max when he became prosperous in this country under another name. Lies. Oh, lies. No, Mrs. Hale, it's the truth. And for that truth, you're going to hang. Hang? As accessory to murder. The murder of Mr. Pawley, who sought to blackmail your husband. The murder of Pawley by your ghostly confederate, Stephen Osgood. <laughs> I can't. Hey, Max, get that glass from her. No, no, you don't. I've got it. That would have been an easy way, Mrs. Hale. But there is no easy way for those who kill. <laughs> Wonderful, Lamont. And terrible. Mm -hmm. Sounds as if you've covered the situation pretty thoroughly. Well, whatever made you realize the ghost wasn't really a ghost, but was Osgood? Do you remember when Mac shot at the ghost? Mm -hmm. He shot at the ghost through the window. The ghost's face was on the other side of the closed window, you remember? Yes. Well, a bullet might pass through a ghost without damaging him, but it couldn't pass through a window without smashing it. 
care for. Max didn't have bullets in his gun, but blanks. Right. Well, Lamont, how did Osgood gleam? A pinch of luminous paint, very simple. And very convenient if you want to be seen in the dark. Of course. What was all that about the heater? Oh, Lucia turned the electric heater off and on whenever the coast was clear. But how could that be a signal? Have you ever noticed that when you turn any powerful electrical appliance on, that the lights in the house will momentarily dim down? Yes, of course. She could use the heater because you'd never think of it as something visual. Mm -hmm. Still think I'm wonderful and terrible. Well, we'll settle for a half, eh? The third half. And now let me present Blue Coal's distinguished heating authority, John Barclay. Thank you, Andre Baruch, and good evening, friends. It's not too early to plan the spring checkup and cleanup of your furnace, and to make arrangements with your Blue Coal dealer to have that essential job done. Yes, it's essential to good heating and operation that will save you money next winter, and to prevent costly rust damage while your furnace is idle this summer. Blue Coal dealers have specially trained men and special equipment to do a quick thorough, dust-free, and inexpensive job of cleaning your furnace. They can also make the minor repairs necessary. Your blue coal dealer will receive many calls to clean and repair furnaces. So it would be wise to call him now and make sure that he'll be able to fit your job into his schedule. Better make a note right now to call the nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. I thank you. Copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in The Shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. The Shadow is presented by the DL&W Coal Company, distributors of blue coal. Lamont Cranston is played by Brett Morrison. Margot by Grace Matthews. Your announcer is Andre Baruch. Remember, it's blue coal for finest heating surface. It's blue coal for finest modern equipment. It's blue coal for the best home heat money can buy. <laughs>